Love Truth presents the Parent and Family Resource. An introduction and background information about Eloisa. Eloisa shares background information about herself, including a timeline of events from her life and the positive results of her experiments applying divine truth principles in the family. Presented on the 2nd of March 2021 from 12 p.m in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Part 1 Hi, I'm Eloisa, and welcome to the Parenting Resource. This is a resource that I am creating, basically taking principles of divine truth and applying them to parenting. I first heard the um, divine truth teachings about 11 years ago in, that would have been around 2010, I think, or 2009, when I first, first heard them. The Divine Truth teachings, as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, also known as A.J. Miller and Mary Luck, they are spiritual teachings about having a relationship with God and learning about love and truth from God's perspective, um, I suppose, you, and about God's laws and all kinds of manner of other subjects. So you could lump it and say learning about God's way, which is a way of life in order um, becoming yeah, more, more connected with our creator and our true parent God. I love these teachings personally. I have found them that the, applying them sincerely to my life has actually changed my life in a positive direction. I feel that I've gone from being pretty clueless about anything in my life to beginning to actually understand myself, get to know myself and my whole soul and have a desire to actually know my whole soul and know my soulmate in the future which I feel pretty excited about, but have some things to work through in order that I can actually recognise him, in order that I need to recognise myself. I also have found that applying the teachings of divine truth, which really is about me making a lot of personal changes in my life, has improved my relationships with others, including the children in our care. And I have noticed that yeah, life is much smoother and simpler, um, more enjoyable now. There's still a whole lot of stuff going on, but I feel like I have the resources and tools, if you like, in, and I really it's the principles that I can apply to any situation in my life now and I understand more about what's going on and I understand enough about myself to know my reactions and my feelings and why, a lot of things that are happening. I still highly value external feedback because without the external feedback from people who know more about love than me and you know having you know amazing friends and Jesus and Mary and um, some other friends of mine Tristan and in particular they help me to just see things about myself that I can't see so I'm um, yeah very very fortunate to have some very very good good friends who really value and love and uphold tr truth and love as well in their lives and that's what I'm aspiring to do. I don't always get it right and I don't always um, you know, act in a loving manner. That's my aspiration though, to become at one with God at some point and then at one with, at a soul union state with my soulmate um, after that. And um, I feel like those are possibilities now. I have enough faith in this um, way of life, like God's way, in order that I know that that is a possibility and that's where I'm um, aiming to, to get to. So, I haven't done it. Uh, this is my first incarnation into the earth life and my soul. So everything's quite new um, to me and saying, you know, it seems like 10 years is a long time or 11 years is a long time. But in the reality, if your soul is infinite, that's like just a blip on the radar of really knowing or understanding anything. And uh, yeah, so it's an ongoing process for me. And I feel like I'll just be being educated by God for the rest of my life. You know, if God's an infinite being, which I believe he is, then there's an infinite amount to know. So I'm never going to really know everything about anything. So in saying that, I feel like by understanding principles of truth and understanding and having a relationship with God, that a lot of things become clearer and you do know faster and more rapidly. Obviously, well, not maybe obviously, it's obvious to me now, but it didn't used to be, is that 
that's really up to how much I'm willing to stretch and to grow and to absorb of God's way and God's truth and God's love. The more love that I um, receive and the more truth that I receive, then the more I can understand the universe and the more that I can understand myself and my own soul and other people. So for me, I feel like a relationship with God is pretty paramount to the whole process. It's not um, the only way. You can do it by, by your own effort. I feel that that's a little bit harder because it means that you have to discover things and experiment and trial and experiment sort of on your own back. And there's no real, um, you've got no measurement system or, or no, uh, well, you don't know what you don't know. So until you sort of go through it, and I suppose through a lot of pain and suffering, trial and error, etc you know and obviously some really lovely things probably will happen in your life too but it, I think it would just take a lot longer period of time yeah from what I've heard that's that's how it is um, in my own experience I'm finding yeah God's way to be the fastest most effective way um, but again it's up to you the way that you choose to engage the process if you desire to engage it so I thought I'd give you just a little bit of background about myself as well in these videos so that you can get to know a little bit about me. You'll hear anecdotes and various things via the videos as well. This is like seriously like a brief timeline overview of sort of certain, I suppose, things in my life. Yeah, just as some background information. So I was um, born in New Zealand originally, but when I was very young, I moved to England and lived there um, for a number of years. My parents sort of crossed the world a number of times when we were very young. So we uh, changed locations uh, a number of times. I ended up living in New Zealand when I was eight, um, when my parents divorced and my father stayed in um, England and my mum went back to her family or to be near her family in New Zealand. I yeah, grew up in um, a pretty small town and uh, went to obviously school there. I, it's, it's kind of weird talking about myself, but trying to think of things I don't re I don't see them like as that interesting anymore but I suppose I uh, yeah I was, I was, I was uh, quite a sporty kid and um, in my family that was very uh, uh, valued I suppose like you know being sporty was something that was accepted and you got some approval for doing I enjoyed playing sport though as well I also you know was pretty average academically and I kind of just sort of cruised through school then I went travelling when I left school. On oh, no, a first, I actually went and did a furniture making course, so I did a bit of bit of uh, TAFE work and went to did a paper at university. And then I went overseas for a number of years, travelling and sort of exploring different things. While overseas, I realised that if you don't deal with your emotional um, stuff, everything that's inside of you goes with you. It's not sort of like a suitcase that you can leave at a location. You no longer have your possessions anymore. You go with you. So I. Uh, and I had a very unhappy time during that time and eventually I returned to I didn't feel very good about myself and a lot of different things were happening at that time so felt quite down and, and not very you know wasn't very enjoyable some of the traveling was but there was a lot of things that happened in that time I thought I wanted to be an actress so went and uh, auditioned for various drama schools and did a whole lot of different acting classes and things like that anyway ended up going back to New Zealand in my early 20s and did an English literature degree, which was really, I suppose, doing a degree. I think my mum literally said to me, well, you can either get a job or you can kind of go to university. And I was like, well, I'll go to university. So off I went and I really enjoyed parts of university, like learning. I really enjoy learning. Yeah, I got my English literature degree in sort of two and a half years. I did summer schools and stuff. I was all sort of about getting, get, getting the degree, not necessarily really enjoying the degree or immersing myself or, or having deep knowledge. It was more just, let's get in there, let's get it done, let's get out of there, let's move on to the next thing. After I did that, I did that in Wellington in New Zealand. And then I did a year of teacher's training. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but sort of went, well, what am I going to do? Yeah, I did a year of teaching training in secondary education really enjoyed it and I ended up getting my like you know fully qualified in New Zealand and did two years of teaching at a local high school in Wellington and taught drama and English and I, I loved it I particularly loved the children um well they weren't children they were actually young adults and very interesting I really enjoyed getting to know them and um finding out a bit about them and building some relationships and things like that 
I also learned a lot about myself in, in those years. I've always sort of been self-reflective, but not really understanding why things happened in my life and stuff. So I didn't always like work it out or, or figure it out or work through it. But yeah, had some, some pretty, um, when I look back, I suppose in hindsight, I can see, yeah, various things about myself. And uh, I sort of value, yeah, valued my time there and learned a lot about so the education system and saw a lot of problems with the education system, if you like. And now with what I understand via the teachings of the divine truth, I can see that a lot of education systems are just dealing with effects. They're just trying to behave, manage behavior. And we're not dealing with a lot of the social issues that are happening within families. And then obviously all of that behavior comes into school. And then we're expecting all these children to learn all this academic stuff and to, to learn. But how can you learn when there's all this other stuff going on in your life that hasn't been sorted out? And just parameters and different expectations at home than at school. It's almost like I just watch many teachers even now just trying to control and manage and put out fires. And so a lot of learning can't take place. And there's also a lot of kids are falling through the cracks and there's a lot of very, very bright kids as well. And a lot of time it's teaching to the median. There's some teachers who are able to cover, you know, the whole spectrum, but often it's not. And I just feel like, yeah, there's a lot of problems with our education system. I think some of them could be uh, remedied quite rapidly, to be honest. Um, but it's going to take a, a different way of looking at, at things and a different approach. And, and, pro and I think um, a bit more cooperation between staff and parents and children. And that's something that people talk about a lot, about when there's good relationships between parents, staff and um, children, that a lot of good things happen in schools. But I don't see those relationships always being fostered as much. I feel like there's now quite a lot of tension sort of between teachers and parents and Parents have quite a lot of like, you know, perceived power and then, you know, teachers are just trying to please everybody and anyway, it depends on what school you're at and, and it's a very general comment. But and I'll maybe talk more about my beliefs and feelings about teaching in, in further interviews. So I learned a lot about the education system and, and got a first hand experience of being in the education system, which I, I'm really um yeah, feel feel grateful to have had. After the two years of teaching, I ended up um, meeting my ex-husband and we ended up forming a relationship. Um, he lived in Australia and I lived in New Zealand. So we had a long distance relationship for some, um, some years. Oh no, it wasn't some years, for some months. <laughs> uh, we got pregnant very rapidly and so I ended up moving over to Australia. He had a sheep and cattle station in New South Wales in a little place called Kentucky. And I went and ended up living over there on the farm. Uh, for the first two years, I didn't really go out much in Australia. I was quite petrified of, I don't know, all these perceptions that I had about Australia. And we also were having children in quite rapid succession. So we had three children within two and a half years. So 16 months, 16 months between each child. I sort of joked that we were on a breeding program, just like um, the sheep were at the time. Peter, my ex-husband, had a sheep stud for super fine merino wool. And after the first two years, then it sort of started, I suppose, getting a bit more involved. But it wasn't really until 2014 that after actually a Divine Truth Assistance Group that I really began to want to know and to understand how the business worked and what was really happening there. In 2009, I think is when I first heard Divine Truth, Pete's parents, who I'm very grateful that they actually um, heard Divine Truth, they actually were coming up to Queensland to a beef week, which is all about cattle. And um, they had a, um, Pete's father had a um, Gur and Brahmin cattle stud. And so they were coming up and they actually contacted Jesus and Mary and said, hey, look, can we come past and visit you? And we've heard about you and stuff. And they, um, Pete's parents invited Jesus and Mary to come down to their property and because um, Peter and his parents owned the property together to do a presentation about the teachings of divine truth. At first I was not interested at all in divine truth. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I was very resistive to it actually and mainly because my family were very disapproving of it and didn't think it was any good and things like that and I was very, very connected and uh, enmeshed with my family at that time. 
So I think, I don't know, maybe like six months, a year. I, I, don't, I can't actually remember the timeline or the time period. I then started listening to it. And the first actually video that I ever watched, uh, or Peter and I watched together, was the parenting video. And we just kept falling asleep. I think it took us about a month and a half to actually watch the whole video. We'd be asleep within 10 minutes. And we, we couldn't sort of keep it down. Now, Pete was more interested and more open to, to the teachings, but I think due to my influence, he, he sort of didn't really uh, show up either. Anyway, something shifted within, within sort of about a six-month period-ish. I'm not sure of the time, as I said. And I started listening to a lot of the um, teachings. We, and every time Jesus, Jesus and Mary started coming down, like semi-regularly, and we'd, uh, Pete and I would go, go to half a centimetre each while the other one looked after the children and things like that. And we just couldn't stop listening. And then we had heaps of questions and everything. And since then, literally, I've just been listening to the teachings of Divine Truth and experimenting and putting into practice everything that I heard. I feel so privileged to have the friendship of Jesus and Mary, who were friends with us far long before I was friends with them. And now I class them as yeah, the, the best of friends. They, they honour truth and they honour love and they're consistent and uphold yeah, a, lot of, a lot of wonderful qualities with every person that they meet and uh, yeah, the most like, least judgmental people I've ever met in my entire life. So I feel like when I met them just by their being of themselves and their allowance of emotion and their their desire to know, know people, so to know me, but also to know every person that they met. They're like very interested and curious and their example and just their presence enabled, like for the first time in my life, I felt like I had a valid, my feelings were valid, that my experiences had been valid. Um, in my family, just as a you know, general thing, a lot of things are not said. Um, what is said isn't what is really felt. There's a lot of, there's, well, actually, there's quite a lot of gaslighting in my immediate family. And gaslighting, I mean that sort of an alternate reality, like what I feel is wrong unless it really matches up or agrees with my mum and my dad. And that's quite uh, tricky to navigate. It's quite a manipulative place to be in. And I wasn't, I was used to believing people's words, not actually what they felt. And for the first time, like after hearing Divine Truth and starting to actually allow myself to honor my own feeling and my own experience, I started to realize, wow, well, hold on, like I've been just pretending, you know, that a lot of stuff's happening in my family, like how great they are when actually doesn't feel great at all to have grown up in that environment. And a lot of different abusive things that had happened in my childhood started to come to light. Now, these had already happened before I'd um, heard Divine Truth. So as soon as I had children, my life was really thrown into chaos. I would say that I probably had what is, you know, clinically said as postnatal depression. I didn't know it as that. I didn't get diagnosed in any way of that. But really what I see postnatal depression is, is that when you have children, all of these emotions come up and all of your past is via feelings. It's not necessarily, and for me, feelings and memories started to reoccur. But all of that is confronted within you. And so I had very effectively, I thought, compartmentalized things, fragmented myself, like sort of kept myself separate to certain feelings, denied and shut, at, shut down a lot of feelings and kind of created a facade or a, a way to cope with what had happened in my childhood, really by forgetting most of the stuff that had happened. And, you know, just sort of like to pretend it all was like different to what it was. When I had children, it was like, I don't know, I don't know why, but it was just that things, you get so tired, well I did, and so like just confronted by everything that's happening and I just wasn't really in control anymore, I didn't have any time for myself, <laughs> there was all of the things that I'd used to use to um, control my life and manage my life just all went out the window and that meant that you know, when that happens, then all of the stuff comes up from your past and all of it just happens. And you're just like, I just felt like I can't cope. And I wanted to shut all of my emotions down. So it was after we'd had two children. Um, so about two years after having our first child that we first heard about divine truth. And when I started listening to the teachings, a lot of things started to make sense for me. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. 
you know, I can see why things are happening in my life and I could see more about myself and I could see why the relationship with um, you know, my ex-husband wasn't going so good. And I started, for me, it was very powerful to go, oh, wow, hold on, I can change things. Like, it's not, a, I kind of had this feeling like, well, oh, I can't really do anything. Like, it's all about other people. Um, you know, they kind of dictate my life and I, I don't have any power or control or anything like that. And now, and then I sort of learned, well, hold on, actually, no, I'm in charge of my life and what's happening in my life is up to me and, and all of these kind of things. So, yeah, I began to uh, then experiment with the teachings of divine truth. And, yeah, I've, I've, there's a video up on my YouTube channel about my first experience and experiment with divine truth. And it changed my life, to be quite frank, because there was an immediate feedback result and it was positive. So it went from being utter chaos, like our home was oh, like, I can't, I wish I had footage of it. It was just a mess, like, complete mess, um, dirty, like, just complete chaos. I would clean and tidy everything up, and within 15 minutes, it was just a diabolical nightmare. Um, the children, because I had zero, uh, I just didn't pull them up on anything, like, zero. And they would literally go into the dam, they'd get all muddy, they'd walk through the house, they wouldn't clean up after themselves. Everything was a mess, everything was dirty, everything was just like overwhelming. Yeah, I didn't really know what to do. So when I, and you know, if I was having a conversation, I'd have three kids or two kids, because many of the boys, they would like just cling to me, that I couldn't talk, I couldn't have a conversation. You know, I learned over time, like, hold on, I'm attracting this, I'm creating this, this is because of something in my soul that they're trying to show me. And as I learned that in my heart, and, it, and I began to feel, then things started to change a lot. Really, the thing that changed most in our life is that um, there was a lot of spirit influence in our home. The children were pretty much like overcloaked by spirits as well. So when I actually restrained the children um, or restricted them, which means I just like held them and they went through a whole emotional process and it was just them really having a tantrum. The beauty of it was, and you can't do it if you're angry or upset at your kids, because then it just becomes a punishment. But if you really want to love and you want to educate yourself and your children, it's a really lovely thing to do because you hold them and you are then faced with what you have created. So I was faced with the rage that was in these kids now when they didn't get what they want. And I was faced with, you know, the pain basically that it, I'd caused in them. And so they felt their stuff and I felt my stuff. And um, over a period of time, you know, the spirits disengaged with them because they didn't have free reign in our home anymore. And then things started to change like quite rapidly in our home, which was really good. But that was not because just the spirits left, it was because I had made some choice of like, I want more truth. I actually want to do the loving thing. I want to know about like what's really happening in our home and how I'm responsible for what's going on here. What am I attracting and why? So, you know, I talk about the spirit influence disengaging. Yeah, that helped a lot. But Really, the main thing was like me making a choice like, no, I want to love more. Why am I allowing, you know, strangers to come into my home as in spirit and body? But I also allowed physical body people pretty much with the same emotions as some of these spirits. Why am I allowing them to come in my home and dictate what happens here? Like, why do I not want to be their authority in this home? Why do I not want to be the governor of this home? Like, those are my responsibilities as a parent. So I started to examine what was happening and sort of measured what was going on. And I mentioned previously, like in 2014, um, Jesus and Mary had an assistance group. And that was to assist, assist people, I suppose, to apply the teachings that they'd already presented in a practical manner. And at that was pretty life-changing event for me because I began to see, I, I'd been working on myself, I suppose, for a number of years. But at that group, it was, I think, the first time I went, oh, wow, hold on. I have a choice and I made a decision, an emotional decision to actually make some changes in my life. And um, as I said, I wanted to then understand the business. I'd sort of been like, no, that's up to Pete. Like he, he can, t man, and the man's in charge of the business, not me. I don't want anything to do with it. So I actually overtook the accounts, like took over the accounts and started doing that. And for the first time ever realized like how much money was going in and out because I didn't really want to take responsibility for that. I understood like how the operation functioned and when there was something that happened on the, um, like there was sometimes attack, like dog attacks on the sheep. So I'd go up to the, um, the medical center for the sheep, like the, the sheep hospital or the animal hospital. And uh, Pete's dad would, would, would fix up a lot of the sheep, do a lot of the veterinary work. I'd go up and I'd help with that or I began to. 
um, if there was a sheep that had to be killed, um, in the sense like there was one that had a lot of cancer, had eye cancer, and it was very um, sick, and it was you know going to die and stuff. So it, it ended up being um, decided that it was going to be culled. So I went and 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 experienced that. Whereas before I just was like, I don't want anything to do with this. And this was something new. Like I didn't. It was because I'd gone through some emotions and some feelings that I'd had about certain things. And then my actions naturally, I was like, no, I, I want to know now. I want to understand how this works. I want to know more about it. So I started to educate myself and, and you know, Pete educated me a lot in what, what was happening there. We also then began to be very interested, well, I was very interested in divine truth and wanted to, um, I heard about learning centers and, and was quite keen to set one up. I actually didn't even understand what a learning center was back then. I said, oh, wow, it's just like a whole lot of people and everyone will be like into truth and love and rah, rah, rah. It was pretty like a bit like airy fairy kind of thing. Uh, now I understand what a learning center actually is, and it's nothing like what I thought it was. But we began to, uh, well, I think Jesus and Mary honored our desires, and there was a couple of um, environment days that were run where we did some tree planting, and um, Peter dug some swales, and uh, you know, to catch and hold water on the land and things like that. So we sort of began this process of, I suppose, experimenting with a few different things, and. Jesus and Mary are pretty amazing because they would cut, they, re, they started to visit us quite regularly um, and they really honoured our desires and our, the things that we thought that we really wanted to do. And I say thought because over a period of sort of five years, we were really focused on the farm and on sheep and producing wool and you know, did some lovely, like some really cool experiments, like with a black flock of sheep and trying to, to do it so that sheep could keep their tails on and actually have a usable tail because sheep have been so domesticated now that they get their tails chopped off just so they don't get daggy, which is getting lots of poo on their, on their tail. Um, and so they don't get fly blowing and things like that, which means the flies are getting their lay maggots and then sort of like eat the sheep out at the back of its bottom. Anyway, but we're trying some different experiments and things. But Jesus and Mary just like would, would talk to us about truth and talk to us about where we thought our passions and desires were at. Anyway, one time they came down and they said to us, well, what do you guys really want to do? Like, what would you want to do with the rest of your existence? Like your whole existence. And I was like, existence? What do you mean? That's like, could be infinite. So we, um, anyway, Pete and I decided, well, we went away and we wrote down what we wanted individually, uh, not actually together. And then we came back and we shared different things that we wanted together. And we thought it was all about sheep and property and all this stuff. And I also, over a period of time, like um, I, I found it very hard to engage my own de passions and desires. I didn't really know what they were and I, I didn't know what to do. And I kind of thought that I was just going to be a mum and, a, and a, a wife for the rest of my life and that that was really my whole role and the only use and purpose I had in my life and the only thing that I'd ever be good at kind of thing. Via this... Um, exercise was the beginning of an emotional process of starting to work through things and I realized well hold on I had a lot of sadness actually to to feel of when I f actually connected to the fact that that's all I thought I was worth and I realized well hold on no actually I, I, I I'd like to do other things so uh, then I tried some creative things um, and Jesus was quite lovely at one point. He said, well, all souls have creative expression, Eloise. I like, that's not really your full soul's passions and desires. That's just like a part of the natural expression of anyone's soul is, is creative desires. So at the time, I thought that shoemaking was going to be my huge, big desire. And I began to make shoes. So I, a lady actually came up from Tasmania who was a wonderful shoemaking teacher. She taught me how to make shoes and boots and things. And I started making vegan shoes. And I thought, wow, this is going to be like my big thing. <laughs> anyway, then I am, some local people in the local community asked me to actually make, you know, to make some shoes with them and said, look, would you teach us? So I started doing shoe workshops where I taught them how to make shoes and the principles and all those kind of things. And I realized, wow, actually, I really love engaging with people and I really enjoy having these interactions and teaching people things. And so I realized like, oh, actually, shoes aren't really that important to me. But I, it helped me to get to the teaching of people and go, well, actually, no, I'm really excited about this. Then I met um, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine now, called Tristan Miller. And he was very interested and has a real passion for teaching children. And I thought um, I sort of got through, you know, some of this teaching and I was like, wow, I really want to teach children and sort of create a divine truth based school. So principles of divine truth. 
structure a school and a whole education system on that. And we ended up having a lot of meetings and talking about um, the school and this education system. Both of us had a lot of injuries in actually taking action and doing things. So we had a lot of excellent conversations, not a shortage of ideas, and a lot of, um, yeah, a, a lot of interesting discussions and things on children and all this kind of thing, and, and got very excited about it, etc. I'm going to make a school. But neither of us really acted on that so until very recently. So we, yeah, so we did that, and we, um, and then over a period of time, I realised that hold on, I'm not actually that interested in children as much. Like I'm interested in children, and we have children. I'm learning a lot with them and stuff, and trialling a lot of different things with them. But I actually was like then like, oh hold on, I worked through some issues about parents and adults, and I'd been quite afraid of adults and my own parents. And as I worked through some of my own emotions and feelings and past stuff that I had going on there. I realized, no, actually, I really would love to educate parents because what I'm, I, I just could see that what I was experimenting with and what I was doing was so helpful in my life. Like, honestly, it changed my life over a matter of like a month or so. And that didn't mean that like, everything was great or fine. It's just that I could see results. And so my faith in the process grew. And I went, wow, hold on. There's a possibility that I could have a life that's not just total chaos and where you know I actually could have connected relationships and I could actually get to know these kids and you know my relationship with my husband could be better and I could have better relationships with other people and I could have a better relationship with myself. I sort of got quite inspired I suppose and that helped and then by taking actions and seeing the results my faith grew and then you know I, I learned I had more truth and then I put that into action and then my desire grew and so this sort of like cycle kind of happened which was very exciting for me personally. And I think it probably would be for anyone who goes through that process, particularly when life was so bad. And it, when I say so bad, I just had got to, I suppose, what people refer to as rock bottom. And I could see that everything that I was doing with these kids when they're, when they're very young, this is like sort of before Divine Truth, was just, it wasn't working, but I didn't know what else to do. So I was just kind of kept doing the same thing and nothing was working out. And I tried a whole lot of these methods and these self-help books and stuff, but nothing worked. And I understand why nothing worked because I wasn't changing myself. I was just trying to take new physical actions without actually dealing with the cause of why our family was the way that it was. So it wasn't until I started looking at myself and saying, all right, Eloisa, what is going on for you? What in you is causing these things to happen in your life? And then when I started changing my soul, like myself, and what was inside of me and changing my beliefs, and that's an emotional process and going through emotions and working through things, that's when my life started to change. So yeah, so I suppose I'm going back and forth because it's hard to describe, I suppose, when you don't know things and it's often only in hindsight that you start to see them. So after this 2014 assistance group, you know, uh, there, my first experiment started long before that. And as I said, I'm so grateful to Jesus and Mary because they, they just, we were having a conversation one day and they just said to me, Eloisa, what's going on? I had kids like dripping off me. They were like eating all my food. It was so loud. No one could hear or talk. And I just literally just, I suppose, had permission in that moment. That's how it felt. So it's like a feeling of like, well, you know, they, what is happening for you? And I think I just sort of went, huh, what is happening for me? And I just only, like just said out loud what was happening to me and the kid just ran off and played. And I was shocked. I was like, whoa, like what? And then sort of immediately, you know, they came back as soon as I got back into my, my start, and like uh, was not being, feeling what I really felt anymore. And Jesus and Mary pointed that out to me. And so having that external feedback was just like, ugh, it was just life changing for me. So yeah, so basically uh, I do have, only positive things to say about God's truth and about applying it. I, it doesn't mean that it's always felt positive. Like I went through a very, very dark time for a number of years while I was, you know, a lot of things seemed like suddenly, like some, sometimes when you start applying the teachings of divine truth, you get more real, I suppose. And so a lot of things that you were pretending, or I was pretending and had a big facade about, I dropped those. And so some things seemed worse in inverted commas it wasn't that they were worse they were always that way it was just that that I was now more attuned to them and more aware of them and less trying to hide from them and less glossing over them and so I went through sort of a period of time where it didn't feel very good inside me and 
I didn't have a relationship with God yet. And I, you know, for me, the truth kind of pulled me through. Like I just would keep listening to the truth and Jesus and Mary would visit us from time to time and I'd ask some questions and, and the truth just for me was so important and it helped me to get through a lot of things when I found it really hard and when I was finding it tough. I suppose over then a number of years, I then began yeah, experimenting more with a relationship with God. At first, I just wanted it to be better in my life, like just wanted some, you know, like some peace or quiet kind of thing. Over time, yeah, things sort of got a bit more manageable stuff. And then I started exploring a relationship with God. And that's when things really started to change. Because before that, I went through enough emotionally and there was this shift that happened where it was sort of like I was putting in a lot of effort and I was trying really hard and doing a lot of things, whereas the shift that happened was sort of like, well, no, th like life became simpler and easier and there was a little bit of joy in my life. I hadn't experienced much joy before that or, you know, enjoyment of my life. And also I trusted the process, like God's way so much now that it was sort of like, well, I could see it was just my choice. Did I want to remain in something for a whole long period of time or did I want to do something about it? If I was humble enough to feel what was going on for me, then there's going to be change and better results and I know that for a fact. If I don't choose to make that change and I don't go through the emotion, I'm going to remain in exactly the same place as I already am now. So that became like a heartfelt knowledge, if you like. And so now when things happen, I'm still resistive. I still don't always want to feel things, but there's not this sort of feeling of, there's more now just a sort of feeling of like, well, how long do I want to stay here? You know, like, how long do I want to keep being in this, this resistance for? Because that's my choice now. Anyway, as I was saying, there's, I've sort of like jumped a little bit. Yeah, so we sort of went, I was quite interested in education and children, so my passions and desires. Then I started to be more like, hold on, no, actually, I really would like to share with parents a whole lot of things that are going on and, and useful information that that is practically applicable and to understand that we must change ourselves in order for real change to happen in our lives. Because that's a pretty key principle for anyone to understand or to, to know. And it's also very confronting because I notice and I also at the beginning really wanted to blame, well, I kind of blame myself for most things. So I'm probably a little bit different to a lot of people because I do notice that most people want to blame others or outside influence. It doesn't mean that I didn't have blame in certain areas, like I wanted it to be other people's issues. But mostly for me, it was like, well, hold on, no, I've got a problem. And I could see that. Whereas I do notice many, um, uh, much of humanity feels that everyone else has a problem and they don't have much of a problem. That's a bit harder to deal with because when you think you're right and everyone else isn't, yeah, you're not very humble. So this principle of, you know, starts with you, you know, you're the, you're, you're the main character in your story, you know, you can change you, you make the decisions, you are the one who is attracting the things that are happening in your life, you're the one who is wanting what is happening right now, that's you, no one else, you, so stopping the blame game is a very important thing to do, and I felt like, yeah, sharing, sharing that among a whole lot of other things about parenting would be kind of fun. And that's why this resource has come about now. But before that happened, we got to a point, well, I got to a point where I really wanted some change in my life. And I was really felt like, no, I really want to support the teachings of divine truth and also set up a learning center or be involved in the learning centers. Jesus and Mary lived in Queensland in Australia. And so over a period of five years, I think it took for, you know, us to break down enough us being my ex-husband and I, to break down enough addictions to actually get to a point where we went, oh, hold on, we don't want to actually run the farm in the way that we are and we don't want to do the same things that we've always been doing and actually to act on some things that we'd come up with way back when, when we decided what we wanted in our future existence. And that changed a lot. Like the act of doing that, I had to do another one later on. And, and you know, recently I've done another one of like, what do I really want for my existence? And it's quite different now than it was back then. So we actually end up selling the property and that took, that took a, a while actually to, to sell just because certain emotions needed to be gone through until we were open enough to sell it and we'd let go of enough to sell it. And then we moved about five years ago to Queensland. So the end of 2015, early 2016, we, or 2015 it was, end of 2015 in December, we moved up to Queensland. 
we started renovating a house up here and also began discussions with Jesus and Mary about setting up an organisation called God's Way LTD and became, um, became a director of that organisation and I'm still a director of that organisation at the moment. And that is an organisation, it's a non-profit organisation, it runs completely on donations um, via people who have listened uh, mostly often to divine truth and support the principles and the ideas that Jesus and Mary are sharing with the world. That organisation now runs off um, donations. It owns uh, three prop properties um, and what we call the Environmental Learning Centre and that's a 600 acre property that has, is just a lot of, it's got a lot of bushland. It's not um, virgin bushland, it's been extensively cleared and grazed and damaged but it's a property that's just being um, locked up in order that it can regenerate and regrow and just be left to its own devices. God's Way also has another property that's called the Function Learning Center, where in the future a whole function center is to be set up with like a cafe, a vegan cafe and accommodation and a studio and an auditorium and facilities. I, we've sort of discussed, the directors have discussed a number of different amounts, but let's, let's at the moment say about a 300 seater auditorium so that um, you know, Divine Truth presentations can come there, but also a lot of other uh, presentations from people who are living God's way or even just as a function centre for the local community and to have events there. So this was like the vision for, for that property. It's also at the moment being terraced, so holding water on the land and it wants to plant the most widest variety of Australian seeds that we can possibly get our hands on in order, we being the directors, of God's Way organisation in order that we can make a living natural seed bank of native Australian flora and fauna. Um, then there's a third property that's jointly owned with um, a private individual and God's Way. That is we call refer to the Function Centre Caretakers property. It has a little house that's being renovated at the moment by God's Way volunteers and the whole of that property will be end up, well not the whole of it, but the majority of it will be terraced, also planted with some natives but with also to have food production happening there. And the regeneration projects and food projects are ways to educate um, local and national and international farmers on new ways of how to, um, you know, regenerate land when it's been overly, basically used for agricultural purposes in the fastest possible way. It's one of it's a very good design. I feel it's holding water on the property now, the terrace project, and. Yeah, beginning to like plant seeds and experiment with different methods of how to use those, uh, how to make those both automated and manual processes so that you can have like less labor intensive so that, la that, that basically the project can be scaled down to small scale or scaled up to a really large scale. The purpose of God's Way, which I feel really passionate about, is taking the teachings of divine truth and practically applying them and creating living examples. Like it's, it's a membership-based organization and as I said, nonprofit. So any, any profits, it's not making a profit yet. If it did, all those profits would go back into the organisation to further its um, objectives. And that's to share freely with the world. So everything that is um, created and all the projects that happen in God's way are documented and they're shared freely with the world. And in the end, there's going to be many branches and cover all kinds of human endeavour. So at the moment there's construction branch doing a lot of renovations and looking at um, alternative building projects and doing experiments on new building materials. There's the um, environmental branch, and that's doing a lot of environmental projects. There's the human life branch, and that's to do with these kind of things about parenting resources and all kinds of things like that. And the, the parenting resource that I'm creating will be gifted freely to um, God's Way organisation as well, so that it can be used by, by many. I'd like to refine it, um, refine it as I go. But, uh, you know, it's free of charge and anyone can use it. You can share it freely with, with your friends and, and neighbours. So there's sort of been like a whole process to get to this resource. I've been talking about it for a whole number of years, but I haven't actually got to making it. But finally, I'm now wanting to make it. I feel really passionate about parenting and, yeah, just the, the potential for positive change in the world. If we as parents make some shifts and changes within our own souls and our own hearts, then the next generation is going to benefit from those and there's a lot of good we can do with dealing with causes in ourselves that will deal with a lot of effects in our families. And once families um, you know, have become more loving, then that will have a natural onflow to the rest of society. So yeah, I, I feel very, very passionate about sharing um, principles of divine truth that I've learnt and applied 
and also passionate about discovering more about about what it means to be a real parent and how God parents and yeah all of those things so as I said I'm continuously learning I'm continuously discovering new things I'm just where I'm at right now and will be you know changing developing over the coming years and that's that's part of the way that God's I think created it I feel like the faster that we can get to a point where we become really comfortable with changing and developing and you know acting on our own passions and desires and sharing what we know with others I think there's some really positive benefits in the world for that so I suppose in my timeline we arrived in Queensland um, that organization was set up and that's been so God's Way has been going since 2016 as that was being set up I was also volunteering for Divine Truth and Jesus and Mary when I say volunteering I kind of feel like I was had this beautiful opportunity and feel so grateful and privileged to have had the just the training and the opportunity of Jesus and Mary teaching me all kinds of things m mostly about love but also a whole lot of skills so you know video skills and editing skills um, video editing skills um, you know a little bit about audio and things like that I still am learning a lot on those areas and becoming technically savvy but yeah, I feel like I've just, I'm just going, I've also um, been trained and educated in how to manage projects in, in God's way. And really though, what I loved the most and I think value the most is that working in an environment where love and truth are upheld and where God's way is the focus. So everything is, what is, what is God's way? How does God feel about doing these things? Like, what would God do in these situations? Like looking for the most loving way, the best way that it possibly can do with the resources and the knowledge and the ability that we have at any one time. That's been the most greatest gift because by understanding what love would do, then that under, like, and, and by growing the relationship with God and having a connection with God, there's a direct link now that I don't feel always confident under everything, but I'm noticing I get more inspiration now. I can ask direct questions and get some quite loving ideas and inspiration. I don't feel yet that I'm at a state where, say, you know, uh, Jesus, who's in a far greater um, capacity of love, you know, just knows and understands more about that than I do at this time. And I notice that, yeah, just his understanding and his knowledge and the way that he can assess a situation and apply multiple loving um, outcomes to, to this one thing. I really admire that and I would like to work towards that as well. So just have some more soul growth personally to do in order to get to that point. But I trust that that will be part of the process. I just noticed that for me, grow, the growth that's happened in the last 10 years, I can see that, yeah, how I feel about things. I feel like a really different person. I recently um, actually saw some people I hadn't seen for, well, gosh, about eight, eight years or so. And they're like, oh, you're just the same. And I, I said to them, well, I said, oh, maybe, but I said, I feel completely different. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting, I suppose. It's like when something physically changes, you know, you, you kind of can see that when there's a whole lot of stuff happening inside, unless you're uh, soul aware or you, you can feel other people and the changes that are being made, it's harder to sometimes see what's changed. I just know that I'm less, yeah, just a lot of, uh, I can't, there's not really one thing, there's a whole myriad of things that have, that have sort of uh, grown or developed with time. And some things are still the same, they are, and I haven't shifted on those yet. So it's sort of a case by case basis, subject by subject. And that's part of the, the lovely thing I think about God's way is that you can make shifts in one area. And actually, if you make shifts in one area, it does affect every other area of your life. But there's certain, you know, you, you can, can grow your faith by choosing like I think at the beginning I felt like I was just overwhelmed by how much I needed to change in myself and how much there was wrong with I felt like there was wrong with me and I remember at one point going okay just pick one thing just pick one thing and just focus on that and and I did and I just just kept plugging away and kept working on it and the beauty of God's laws and God's feedback system is that you're done when you're done so if there's an attraction and you still have a response to it, like if something happens in your life and there's an event that happens and you have an emotional response to that, it's not done yet, you know, and you'll work through it. Sometimes you might not have an emotional response because you're completely shut down in denial of your emotions. But say if you're really feeling through your gear, if you like, and, and the issues that are coming up in your life, then you will have change. And 
God's good like that. God doesn't like hold out on change or go, oh, well, we'll just, we'll just make them work harder or we won't give that to them until. God gives you immediate feedback, gives you immediate opportunities, immediate rewards. And opportunities, that's something, the more opportunities you take and you take action on and you engage and you have experience and stuff, the more opportunities open up. And this is the beautiful thing that when you don't engage in opportunity, you don't, in a way, I think it's quite a loving provision because if you don't engage, you don't understand what you've missed out on. But once you start engaging opportunities, you start seeing, wow, I had a lot of opportunities I didn't engage. And I know personally I have some regrets about that, but I now see the value and, um, yeah, I really value the opportunities that I'm given. And I feel like that was like working with divine, with Jesus and Mary and divine truth. It really opened up my heart to those opportunities and how important it is to, to do those. And also to be in an environment where um, I was encouraged to be myself, even, even if I was unloving, like just encouraged to be me. The unloving things were always addressed consistently and, you know, across the board to every single person who's there. You know, up here holding truth and love are of the utmost importance. Everything was always addressed, but I was still encouraged to be myself, say what I feel, you know, let yourself feel what I feel. And there's room in the day, you know, it's not about you don't go there and just, you know, if you've got an emotion coming up and you're taking all day to deal with that. I mean, I haven't had that experience yet, but, you know, you, you mightn't take the day off. But, you know, if something comes up, you can go and have a feel about that and then you come back and re-engage with your work. And I think that's what I'd like to be the new normal. Uh, that's what we encourage as well in God's Way organisation. And, um, yeah, it's a, a pretty cool way to work. So when I say that, there's a whole lot of stuff being done, um, but there's the opportunity that you can feel while you're doing it and you can be yourself while you're doing it. And people will, you know, the other, the other members of the God's Way organisation, for example, or if you're involved, people speak up and they'll raise issues with you. And, uh, you know, I get issues raised with me all the time. Uh, consistent, I suppose, just continual consistent feedback. And I think that's another thing that I've learnt over the last 10 years is changing a relationship to feedback rather than seeing it as a judgment or, you know, it's sort of coming out. Even when people are judgmental, their motivations and intentions are really unkind. You know, you're not going to probably spend a whole lot of time on, on those people if that's how they choose to remain. But you can still learn things from these interactions, you know, you can, and you can still love them. And that's the beauty of it. It's like, I remember having a feeling quite desolate at one point of like, well, hold on, like no one's going to change, like no one's going to treat me better and no one's going to actually love me and I'm going to be, you know, I really wanted to be loved and I still am working through that emotion. And now I'm sort of like, yes, but I can love them regardless if they love me or not. And if I am not loving them, well, what in me causes me not to? And mostly I'm finding that it's just some emotion in me that I haven't felt and that I'm worried about feeling or I have some resistance to feeling. Because once I feel through that, then I have like an opening more. And I'm like, actually, no, I really would like to see these kind of, you know, certain people who in the past I was like, no, I don't want much to do with them because they've been mean or whatever. What I felt was mean. And sometimes people have been seriously unkind to me. But I now can see that, I suppose now there's uh, beginning to be a shift very recently of like, well, hold on. You know, people have free will. God's given that gift to all of us, and that makes life very interesting. It also means that we can act on a lot of sinful, unloving things, and when we do, that causes a lot of pain and suffering for ourselves and for others in the world. And in the past, I think I just didn't want to feel my pain and about all of those decisions that other people make that are out of my control that I can't really do anything about. Whereas now, I can see, like, well, hold on, they're making choices, but I don't have to make that same choice. I can do things in the world that are, are, are more, that are in harmony with love and truth. And the more that I learn about love and truth, the more that I can do in harmony with love and truth. Um, you know, you don't know what you don't know until you, someone sort of exposes it to you or until it's exposed to you. And so it's just, a, you know, working through different things so that you become more and more and more and more aware. And the more and more loving you become, the more capacity you have to see more and to um, engage more with the world and to be more yourself. And part of that is your you know, passions and desires, which I touched on earlier and how the process I've gone through of thinking that I was going to just be a shoemaker or just a mum actually and a wife to now going, well, hold on, no, like I want to, um, you know, share what I've learned about divine truth. I want to do, like I'd love to be involved in um, modifying the 
education system worldwide and modifying parenting and you know sharing information on all kinds of things and environmental um, things I'd love to do environmental programs and go to different people's farms and you know or, or just replenish land that's severely degraded it would be uh, I think it'd be really really fun so yeah lots of different things for me and also you know I just keep discovering more and more and more and more and more passions and desires I suppose and acting on those, I now also have a desire for my own soulmate. So I've got a developing desire um, to meet and know who my soulmate is. My ex-husband, we divorced um, about a year and a half ago. And that was over a whole long series of, of events and I tried to work everything out. I really wanted it to work out because I feel like um, being in a relationship and working through certain things would be a is a wonderful opportunity. Um, and when you're in an intimate relationship, there's a whole lot of things that happen that don't happen when you're on your own. And, you know, you can learn a lot about things. But there were some fundamental things such as um, my ex-husband not wanting to have much personal truth about himself. And he was quite happy while I was feeling that I was wrong and bad in the relationship and that everything was my fault. But when I started sort of being quite firm about, well, no, you know, being very unkind to me, particularly about pulling my nature and personality down, that's not, not okay. And I started to get a bit more sense of self and not accept that so much. And his lack of desire for truth, which is the main reason that the marriage um, broke up, um, that caused us, well, caused me to make some decisions and um, we made some decisions to end up to finally divorcing. So very little to do with um, my ex-husband now. Children live between us, but I'm doing some very different things than he is with, with, with parenting. Yeah, so that's sort of where we are now. And I am wanting to, I suppose, learn more about myself and be myself more, which means that I need to engage my passions and desires fully and in order that I can really be myself in the world and express myself in the world. And when I say myself, I mean my soul, our soul in the world. And I trust the process that the more that I engage my passions and desires, the more that I um, am just me and myself, then I will attract my soulmate into uh, my life and that I'll recognize him. <laughs> At the moment, I don't know if I'd recognize him. And I'm noticing every time I long for my soulmate, there's like another issue that I find about myself that's out of harmony with love and a lot of them are gender issues and how I feel about women, how I feel about men, a lot of these kind of things that I'm sorting out as I go. And I feel engaging passions and desires is one way to really work through things as I talked earlier about desire and how powerful that is and having a desire and acting on it. You learn a whole lot about yourself and about love and about truth and about God and God's laws and all kinds of stuff and that's the path that I'm on now or the, uh, it's not really the path, it's the, it's what I'm doing now. That's why this, this resource is, is finally, I suppose, coming into, um, into fruition. One, I feel like it's very important. Um, two, I can see that I've really been uh, hesitant on acting. And three, I now have more faith in the fact that a lot of things I don't, I wanted to kind of be perfect before I even did anything or, or present it perfectly. And so these videos are not going to be perfect. They're not going to be um, super refined, but they will become so as um, I become more refined and I learn more skills and all those kind of things. But I just feel like you got to start somewhere. I'm starting here. Yeah, and it's, I suppose it's 2021. Yeah, we'll see how it goes from here. But this resource is a gift. To, to you and it's a um, gift to the world. Please feel free to share it and to yeah, share it with others if you so desire or you find it helpful. I just wish you all the best in experiment and I just encourage you to um, have a go and give it a go and take some action. And when it gets hard, give it another go. You know, If it's not working out, work through your reasons or your feelings about that and then try it again. I've found that by just trying and trying and trying and well, not trying, just doing it, taking action, feeling, taking action, feeling, taking action, feeling some more, taking action, feeling, learning from what I'm doing, not taking the same action over and over again because you'll end up with the same results. But if you take an action, if it works, great, keep going, take another action, keep another action. If you get to sort of a point where nothing's changing or, and I've had many experiences of that, you know, like I've been experimenting with my own parenting and stuff and I hit stagnant places where it just sort of everything stops and nothing's really changing. 
And it's just because I'm not working through some of my issues. And there's the feedback. Well, Ello, you're not working through your stuff. Nothing really can change. We can't move forward past this point until you deal with it. So that's a little bit about me and my background. Um, as you'd have noticed, I sort of, I suppose I touched on events, but the events in my life don't really sort of seem that important. Um, what really feels important is since I heard the teachings of divine truth and then by applying those, now what's sort of happening in my life and the differences that I'm seeing in my life and the changes that are happening. And I feel so excited about those and so passionate about those because there's so much potential and possibility in this world and this life. And yeah, the more that we can um, be ourselves, experience ourselves. And for me, I really value and would love like close connected relationships. And I'm finding that the more truthful I am and the more that I desire to love and the more humble I am to my own feelings and experiences, then the closer, you know, and more connected I feel to other people and the more interested I become in them and their lives and who they are and what they're like. And I have this feeling that each person has uh, particular passions and desires that are completely unique to them that God's gifted them. And it's just a matter of us discovering what they are and how wonderful would it be if in the world, instead of sort of all these like addictive things that we do and engaging with people in um, in sinful interactions and harming one another, we actually began to act in, in love with one another. I find that quite inspiring and a lot of potential to that. I also have found that, you know, growing a relationship with God, I'm realizing now more and more that what's happening on earth is the actions and decisions of people, not not God. God God's system is is beautiful and loving and and upholds love and you know honors love whereas most people on the earth they don't and it's our decisions that are causing the pain and suffering in the world and it's up to us to make those changes in order that there's you know we eliminate pain and suffering in the world and that is possible it's a possibility but it is going to take each of us individually working through our own issues and and actually making some different decisions and being humble to what's going on and becoming 100% emotional beings and having some faith in that and you know in the way that God's created for us to be, to be grow in love and it's going to take some courage on each of our part for us to make some changes in our lives when you're really used to doing things and we're quite set on them sometimes we can be pretty stubborn in making positive change but again we have the free will to do to do as we would like this is just a resource and a opportunity to to try something new and have a go and if you choose to use it I wish you all the best and I'd love to hear of your experiences. I'm very interested in how things go and if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them. Lovely to meet you via camera and possibly, um, hopefully one day, maybe in the future, I might, I might get to meet you in real life. Uh, until then, all the best and uh, go well.